In this video, we're going to discuss the uh, PhoneGap SQLite actions in Action JavaScript. So these are actions that you can use in a PhoneGap application to work with a SQLite database that is on your device. So you can see that um, uh, in Action JavaScript, there's a uh, an action called SQLite actions, and if you if we edit this, we'll see that. Uh, that there are several SQLite actions that you can um, perform. You can download a SQLite database from your server and uh, store it on the device. You can make an AJAX callback to the server and actually dynamically create a new SQLite database and then download that to the device. You can execute one or more SQL uh, statements against the on-device SQLite database or you can list the tables in a SQLite database. So we're going to demonstrate all of these um, uh, methods, but um, a bit of uh, housekeeping work. Before we start this, we're actually going to demonstrate this by using um, a SQLite shell that's running on our, the mobile device. So we'll first go off to our web projects here, and we've created a shell component over here. We did that using the uh, template here, the PhoneGap shell. And by using the, by creating a shell, we can uh, run test components easily on our mobile device without having to go back to PhoneGap build every time. So if we look at this uh, shell component that we created, you can see here that, um, that uh, when we go to our PhoneGap project here, uh, you can see that basically we're using the shell as our initial component. Uh, where we've defined our AJAX URL for callbacks and then we've specified that this particular shell component uh, has a preloaded uh, SQLite database. So if we go here to SQLite databases you can see that we're preloading a uh, database called db1.db and if we look inside this database we'll see that this database has um, two tables, uh, content, uh, customers and products. So once we um, have built this uh, shell component here, then we can load this, uh, this test component uh, into the shell. And this test component is going to basically show off the various features in the um, uh, PhoneGap uh, Action JavaScript library. So this first button here, um, uh, All Customers, is going to basically execute a SQLite action over here called uh, execute SQL statements. So if we go and look um, at the actual code here, we'll see that the first uh, action in this action JavaScript is to set the value of the SQL field over there to the name of the SQL statement that we want to execute. So uh, when, we, when we click the button, the first thing that happens is this SQL field here, its contents is getting set to um, um, to this value basically uh, select customer ID contact name city and country from the customers table and then we're executing the SQLite action over here which is execute SQL uh, statement and the, the SQL statement that we want to execute is simply being read from that variable so basically whatever value is inside the SQL field will become the SQL statement that we execute so in this case that value is going to be select and then a field list from the customers table and then we return the uh, SQL database and then once that um, has successfully completed the on success function fires and you can see that in the on success function you get access to a variable called result array which has all of the data that you got back and then we're just using this method of the UX component called set list columns and populate which basically takes the data in this array and populates this list, list one over here. So now let's pause and we'll pick this up now uh, by looking uh, on the mobile device and actually running these commands. So we're continuing now with our uh, discussion of the SQLite uh, actions in Action JavaScript that are available in a PhoneGap application. And you can see now we have uh, my iPhone here and we're running the uh, shell and we can now load the uh, component uh, in the shell so we'll go ahead here and click on the component name and there you can see our component uh, basically uh, is displayed and now when we press this first button here called all customers you'll see that when I, I t tap that button 
there's the SQL command that we're going to execute, select, and then um, a bunch of fields from the customer table. And then you can see in the bottom window over here, we basically get uh, to see the data uh, populated into that list control. If we go and tap on the All Products uh, uh, field over there, you can see now we basically are doing a SQL query, select star from products against the um, preloaded SQLite database and there you can see there's the data now in our uh, list control. So basically what we're doing is we're making a, a SQL query against the on-device SQLite database, getting a result set and then dynamically populating the uh, list control um, over here. So now let's basically go and take a look at a slightly more complex um, 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 uh, action over here. So here we have a drop-down over here that is displaying a list of customers, uh, a list of countries, so there's our list of countries. And then this uh, SQL statement over here called um, get customers in country. If we go and look at the um, SQL here, we'll see that the SQL that we're going to execute is um, again select and then a column list from the uh, customers table but this time we're adding in a WHERE clause and in the WHERE clause we're using a question mark to indicate that this is a an argument as a po so rather than putting in a hard-coded value like country equals USA we're going to go ahead here and use an argument so now let's go look at the uh, SQLite action over here so if we go and edit this you can see that the actual SQL that we're executing again is just basically being read from that uh, uh, input control, from the SQL input control. But then we need to go and specify uh, what the argument value is because recall now that the SQL statement said where country equals question mark. So now we need to go and define how that question mark argument will be defined. So we'll go here to arguments and we can see that arguments needs to be an array. So if there was one question mark in the SQL, then our array would have one item. If there were two question marks, our array would have two items. In our case, the array has a single question mark and the value that we'd like to have this array, uh, this argument set to is the value in that drop-down box. So we're going to just return an array that has inside it the value of uh, the country field in that uh, in that drop-down box. So let's go back now to our phone. So we'll go ahead over here now. And now let's go on, this and, uh, on the phone and set the value of our drop-down box. So we'll go here and choose, say, Canada. And now after we do that, we can go here and say, uh, get customers in country. And there you can see all the customers in Canada. If we go now, and let's go here and choose, say, Germany and then go here and say get customers in country. Basically there are the customers in Germany. So what's happening behind the scenes there is that we're doing a SQL query and using an argument that has been dynamically set to this value in uh, the drop-down box. So next what we'd like to do is uh, demonstrate how we can make an Ajax callback to the server and dynamically create the database on the server because at this time up, up until now, we've been using a SQLite database that was created at the time the, C the PhoneGap project was built. So uh, this means that the data that, that we're using right now was, in, was created uh, and placed into the SQLite database at design time. So this may no longer be very um, up-to-date data. So we'll continue now in the next video by making an AJAX callback to the server and dynamically creating the SQLite database. So we're continuing now with our discussion of uh, SQL, using SQLite in a PhoneGap application. And now we're going to talk about how you can uh, make an AJAX callback from an application and dynamically create a SQLite database on the server and then download that database to the mobile device. So let's take a look here at this uh, action here called Make Database. So we'll open up uh, jo the Action JavaScript Builder and bring up our SQLite actions. And we can see here that the action that we've chosen is uh, this one. Create SQLite Database on Server and then download to the device. 
So we're going to specify that the name of the SQLite database when it's brought down to the device should be called db2.db. We can specify any name we want. And then we need to specify how the SQLite database will be created. So I'm going to uh, open up the builder here and we can specify um, as many tables in this uh, SQLite database as we want. So the first table we have here is called orders and this table here will be created by making a query against the Northwind uh, database. This is a MySQL database that contains the Northwind data and we're going to basically do a query against the orders table and then return this list of fields over here. Now we could, instead of just specifying a table and a field list, we could have specified an arbitrary SQL query that performed some complex join. Uh, and brought all the data down into a local table in the SQLite database called orders. And then we have a second table here called orders details, which basically is doing a query against the order details table. So this is how the SQLite database itself will be defined. Then we can specify the JavaScript to execute once the SQLite database has been created on the server and also downloaded to the mobile device. So we go here and we can see that what we're going to do uh, is execute a SQL query um, against um, the DB2 database and we're going to execute select star from customers and then in the on success we're going to call this uh, method of the UX component to populate a list control with um, the result array. So basically this code over here was just uh, copied uh, from uh, by, by, by copying the, we just simply copied uh, uh, the code that was generated by the SQLite execute action. So he has the execute SQL commands action and we just went over here and said view JavaScript and we copied this code. So that's how we were able to write the code here to insert into the um, on complete event over here. So this is the code that we executed uh, once the SQLite database has been downloaded to the mobile device. Now, uh, if you're creating a lot of tables in the SQLite database, it's going to take quite some time on the server to actually um, build the SQLite database. And um, while, this, while the, the database is being built on the server, the user is not going to see uh, any indication of work being done. So what you might want to do is put up a uh, wait message indicating that the server is busy building the database. And so then, before, once the database has been built, but before it gets downloaded to the mobile device, you can execute some JavaScript over here. So you'll see here we've got um, a message that says that the database has now been created on the server, but it hasn't yet been downloaded um, uh, to, the, uh, to the mobile device. So we're just going to put up a message that says download will now start. So you can use this event perhaps to hide a wait message that you put up at the start of the Ajax callback. So let's go back now and pause, pick this up in the next video where we actually show this um, um, action. Uh, working on the mobile device. So we're continuing now with our discussion of how to use um, PhoneGap SQLite actions in a uh, uh, UX component and we've described how this uh, make database uh, button is constructed. So this uh, button is going to make an Ajax callback to the server create a SQLite database on the server dynamically and then uh, download that database to the mobile device and then once the database has been downloaded we're going to execute a query against the orders table and then populate this list. So let's go ahead now and tap on the button and so uh, we uh, uh, make an Ajax callback to the server. The database gets created on the server and then the on database complete event fire. So you can see here it says the database has now been created and so when we press the OK button now the download will start and you can see you saw briefly over here there was a progress uh, bar that um, displayed as the database was being downloaded and you can see now we've populated our list control with all of the orders uh, that's, that are in that SQL uh, Lite database. Now 
to show that this uh, database is being dynamically created on the server, what we're going to do now is go over to MySQL and edit the value in this first record over here. So we'll go now to our, mass, our MySQL database over here and there's orders and we can see that the first order uh, 10248 has an employee ID of 6 so let's go now and make that an employee ID of 8 so now when we go back to our phone over here we can still see 6 there but now we're going to tap this button here to make an Ajax callback to the server recreate the SQLite database so we'll go there you can see now we've recreated the SQLite database we're downloading it to the device and you can see now we're getting the updated version uh, from the server. So what we've shown over here is how we can make an Ajax callback to the server, create an arbitrary, an arbitrary SQLite database populated with data from different uh, SQL databases. We can also populate the SQLite database with static data or with data that is returned by any XBasic function which means that that could be an XBasic function that calls a REST endpoint or a SOAP service to go get uh, data or just dynamically com uh, computes the data. So the last um, action in Action JavaScript that we'd like to demonstrate in the video is the list tables uh, button over here. So if I go there and say list tables, that shows me the tables in uh, the database called uh, db1.db. So if we go now back to the builder here and we look at the uh, list tables button, we can see that list tables is basically simply executing a um, get tables in database action against the table called db1 which is a root database. This means that this was a database that was populated at uh, design time and is part of the PhoneGap build project as opposed to a database that was dynamically download, downloaded and in the on success which is simply um, displaying whatever is in results array which is the list of tables. So what we've shown uh, in these videos uh, here is how you can um, it work with a um, on-device SQLite database by executing SQL statements against the uh, SQL database, how you can dynamically create a SQLite database by making an AJAX uh, callback uh, to the server. And uh, what the SQLite database allows you to do is have access to very large amounts of data while your application is disconnected so you don't have to constantly make callbacks to the server to go and get uh, data you're working with a on-device uh, SQL database. Thanks very much for watching.